So recently we've had some people send in some questions uh, on our chat line, on the page, on the group, uh, via emails. And so I'll just go through some of these questions for you. Uh, one of the questions was, what is the difference between a full connective tissue graft and a partially keratinized graft? When do you use them? How to harvest? What do you harvest the site after taking the graft out? How to prepare? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this question is a little bit confusing. I think what they're trying to say is, when do I use deep connective tissue on the pellet with a trapdoor approach? And when do I use de-epithelialized uh, tissue from the surface of the pellet? And when do I just use a free gingival graft? If I don't care how it looks and I want it to be easy, simple, reliable, and I'm not trying to cover the roots, I'm just trying to provide dense tissue to prevent further recession, I will do a free gingival graft. Or if I'm trying to create attached tissue for some reason, free gingival graft is best. Uh, free gingival grafts look ugly, okay? They look like a patch. Uh, some people can make them look amazing, but you're not one of those people, so don't think that you will make them look amazing. They'll look like a big patch of tissue on the side of the gum. The palette is a different colour to the buccal tissue, so it's going to look a different type of material. When I use the deep tissue, that's when we raise the overlying tissue on the palette and then harvest the tissue that's lower down against the uh, bone and often take the periosteum as well. I use that tissue when I want it to look beautiful. So if I want to look beautiful, I will use the deep tissue. The deep tissue is less keratinized, it's less dense, um, and it is less specific. So it will basically just adapt to whatever tissue you put it in. Basically, it won't give you any sort of keloid scarring or it won't turn, it won't have remnants of epithelium that then come through and show. So if I'm doing something I want it to look beautiful, then I'll use the deeper tissue. Now, some people call, it, when you use a de-epithelialized connective tissue graft, they call it a free gingival graft, but it is not. A free gingival graft has still got the epithelium on it. If you de, once you remove the epithelium, by definition, it is sub-epithelial connective tissue. But the surface layer of the palate is much more dense and keratinized than the deeper layers. It has advantages and disadvantages. It's easier to harvest a huge graft. You can go right from the lateral incisor right down around the back of the tuberosity if you want to. So you can get the hugest graft. Because when you take the surface layer, you're not worried about hitting the greater palatine artery, which isn't a huge problem, but it's always slightly, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it, you're gonna have a small spike in your blood pressure when blood starts going everywhere. Uh, I use that when I want the, to elevate the tissue down, but I want to have the most resilient, tough result. And I'm not that concerned about how it looks, because it can end up looking like a free gingival graft. Uh, if you leave any small amounts of epithelium, then it can form a cyst. Okay, which you can fix later, but then you get the underlying graft come through. Or uh, it can just all come through and it ends up looking like a free gingival graft. So I use that when I want it to be resilient and when I want to cover tissue, because you need to kind of raise a tunnel or a flap if you want to bring it down over the expired roots. If you do a free gingival graft just over roots, not sitting on periosteum, it'll die. We all try that once. Uh, what do I do to the harvest site? When I, take a, when I take the surface layer off and I just leave an open wound, then I put surgery cell over it and glue, okay? And that protects the harvest site for a few days and then it falls off, okay? It's gonna hurt. Don't be afraid, I mean, don't be mean about dentistry, but if you've gotta do something that's gonna cause pain, then do it, okay? It's like going to the orthopedic surgeon, I want my hip replaced, but I don't want any post-operative pain. He might say, well, I want a unicorn made by Mercedes, but he's not going to get one. Uh, how do you prepare and place a graft? If I'm doing a de-epithelialized graft, then obviously I take the graft and then I scrape, basically like I'm scaling a fish, I use the side of the scalpel and I scrape the epithelium off. You can 